Some of you may have heard the term Walter Mitty. Basically, that's somebody who pretends to be something they're not. And in military terms, it would be somebody who would blag that they'd been in the SAS or they'd been in the uh, Marines or they were a para or they served in the Falklands or they were in Afghanistan or they were this or they were that. When the truth was, they were probably never anywhere near the place. Um, with real military... Now, bear in mind, I've never been in the military. I have no idea about what it's like to be in the military myself. But having spoken to real people who have been in the military, the sort of misery that these people go through just in basic training alone is more than, more than any one of these waltz could ever cope with, right? And that's part of the reason that most of them are waltz, because they couldn't hack it. They either couldn't get in, or they couldn't stay in, or they were out in, in, in weeks because they couldn't cut it, or they were, I don't know, whatever, right? But they can't handle it. They couldn't walk the miles, or whatever it was that made a military man a military man. There's a few things also about a military man. He didn't get paid fuck all. They never did. They never got paid any real amount of money. And it's amazing how the army do tend not to look after them after they've been in and they've used them, they've trained them, they've changed their way of thinking, they've turned them into some sort of killing machine, right? And then didn't actually fix them after. So these poor bastards end up being picked off the street naive, told they're going to do their bit for their king or country or queen or country, depending on when you join, <coughs> get sent to somewhere, get used, abused, end up fighting a war for political reasons they had no idea anything about. All they were doing was doing their bit for their country because they love the country. Half of them come back mentally damaged because they've seen their mates get blown up, killed, stabbed, shot. They've seen other things that would just be horrible. Okay, And after they've done their time, however it is, whether it was three years or more, they could have gone the full term. I don't know. I don't know enough about it, right? They then have to uh, come back to normal life now how the hell do you cope with normal life if say for instance you've been in a land rover where you've seen the vehicle in front with your mates get blown up and you are pretty well messed up yourself how do you how do you ever get over that you don't ever get over it that's the thing um there were people who went to serve out in say for instance the falklands who came home and then after the falklands killed themselves that's the truth of it apparently we have lost so many people through the Falklands War, after the Falklands War, through PTSD suicide, because those blokes were fixed bayonets. They went in and had to stab the enemy. Now, whether you believe that the war was right or wrong, it doesn't matter. That's irresponsible. That, 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 that's got nothing to do with anything. These blokes went out there when they were asked to do their job. Half of them, right, after the helicopters got um, blown up on the Atlantic conveyor, ended up having to yomp their way across. That was about 70 miles. They all got there dehydrated, their feet were knackered, they were run down, right? Or, say, for instance, the Welsh, was it the Welsh Guards on the Galahad, right? They ended up getting burnt because there was a, a, a high-up army ranking person who wouldn't listen to advice of somebody who knew what they were on about saying, get the men off, along with the arms, which you weren't meant to do, because apparently during peacetime, you cannot put men sat on top of all the arms and the munitions and everything else because of safety reasons. Well, um, when you're down Bomb Alley or whatever they call the place, right? Um, and I've probably got those two mixed up because I think Bomb Alley was another part of Falklands. But either way, when you have got uh, Argentinians trying to come in and literally blow any of your craft out of the water, which is exactly what they did with the Galahad and uh, they had a few others, didn't they? Antelope, um, Antrim, uh, Sheffield, Coventry to name but a few boats uh, and then as I say the Atlantic conveyor got hit and that was merchant seamen nevertheless still in a war still doing a bit so when you think about it, I'm just talking about the Falklands and then you've got both uh, if you went back as far as the second world war I don't think we've got any members of the first world war alive um, then you've got people who are out in say for instance uh, Aden they were probably getting on a bit now. As I say, the Falklands, you've got um, Afghanistan, you've got the two Gulf combats. All of these people came back with something different about them that was unfixable. Many won't mention it, uh, and many don't go around wearing their medals, not because they're embarrassed, but they don't want to show off as well. Some people are a bit like that. Other people will, on the day in question, say, for instance, when it comes to Remembrance Sunday and stuff like that, they'll wear the medals. Or if they're asked to go to an event, they will also wear their medals. And there's a certain 
humbleness. There's a certain, I don't know what you want to call it, I haven't got the right words for it, but they don't shove it in everybody's face. And if you ask them, right, politely, some of them may tell you some stories. Um, real stories, real events of what actually happened. But when you get some shit house pretending that he was a serving member of the military who wants to claim the valour of men who f suffered to get that valour, right? These were people that, that have missed out all of the misery and all of the upset and all of the actual PTSD caused by such an event and all of the other troubles that come with going in to see something so horrendous that you can never erase it. So what have we got? Anxiety, depression, anger management problems, feelings of isolation, feelings of not being able to connect themselves with people, needing to go homeless because you can't be around groups, builders up people, the total disconnection from society. Uh, that's just some of the problems. Um, the breakdown of relationships, constant depression, the want of suicide. All of these things go with people who have been through and seen the utter, utter misery, right, that war is. Because if anybody thinks that war is anything else but awful, you're off your head. Now, as I say, I never went in. Truth was, I think I, uh, I actually looked at the, uh, uh, the, the test, or I took the test actually down in uh, Western Supermare, because uh, somebody said, well, why do you have a go? So you get on. And I was so fucked dyslexic, all I was ever going to do, I think, was be uh, is it a bandsman or I don't know, something like that, which is not to say that's bad, but I think I want to go in a... What did I want to do? I can't remember at the time. I'd have been happy just playing around with cars. That would have been the Remy. But I probably couldn't even get into the Remy, right? But as I, I was a, a, a lazy little bastard at 16, truth be told. I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, but I think people that go into the military, a lot of them have wanted to do it for a long time. Others just end up finding themselves in it. My friend particularly went in there, thought he was going to go and see a bit of the world and have a bit of a doddle. Turned out he ended up in the first, uh, uh, what was it, first, not Afghanistan. Um, ugh, where was it? Where we ended up with Gulf War. He went there and he watched his mate get run over in front of him by, um, he was a, a gunner. I don't know much more than that. But when he came back, he used to just get out of the car and just run and run and run. And he was just a totally different bloke when he came back. Anyway, let's read this. Rishi Sumak. Sunak duped by Falklands or Walter Mitty, who is actually a pub singer. Chris Webber joined a veterans meeting with the Prime Minister after claiming he was a Falklands war hero, or Falklands hero, but has now been revealed he bought his Green Beret online. You've only got a look at the way he was wearing it. Even I know you don't wear a, 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 a beret like that. I learned today that apparently you shave your beret. Now, if you've been in, apparently you'll know about that. And sometimes you wet the berry and you have it, I think it's that when it's new. Uh, yeah, whatever. Anyway, a supposed war hero was pictured at a veterans meeting with Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. Has been exposed as a fake. Chris Webber said he worked behind enemy lines during the Falklands War. But in reality, he was a holiday rep. And a pub singer in Spain last month, Mr. Weber 64, was invited to a veteran summit in Downing Street where he spoke to ministers. A security probe is now underway after he was unmasked by a veterans group which exposes fake war heroes called the Walter Mitty Hunters Club. I have seen some of their stuff on uh, YouTube. They, go, they do one to a guy outside the uh, House of uh, Parliament, and he is so obviously a Walt as well. Uh, they're, very, they're, they're very honest about the way they go about things. And to be honest, if I was stood in front of a person who pretend that he had served alongside other men that had passed away, right, pretending that he'd actually been there when he hadn't, I don't think that would make me too happy at all if I'd thought, you know, because... A lot of these people that went out honestly to defend their country never made it home. And people like this are pretending that they've been out and done it. Absolute rubbish. Um, members of the group spotted that two of his medals were not military and his camp badge was from the reign of George the... Looking at that, George the Sixth. Is that right? The group were used as a decoy to contact him via... Uh, anyway, they got hold of it. 
let's just see if I can move this because I'm in trouble here. What did he say? Mr. Weber said, I was quickly seconded into the intelligence corps as I spoke fluent Spanish. I was a spook. It's like all the people that say they're SAS. It's a bit like if you were in a drinker's pub back in the, like, the 80s and the 90s, you'd speak to an old guy. If he was full of it, he'd have said he was a driver for Ronnie Cray. One of them. Anyway, spook, he said in April 82, as I landed as part of a four-man covert team to observe the enemy movements, I was there 74 days and lost 255 colleagues to Argentinian hostilities. You didn't lose them, mate, uh, because they weren't your colleagues. They were real men. They weren't full of shit. I once adopted the role of an enemy soldier. At this point, it would have been obvious that he was talking absolute shite. If I'd been sus sussed, goodness knows what would have happened to me. Well, you got sussed this time, sunshine, didn't you? Losing friends who were like brothers to me has been very difficult. I, I'm starting to get pissed off and I was never there. Weber from London also claimed to have P PTSD and convinced homeless veterans charity stroll he had spent three years living in his car in Sheffield, but his only army service was a few months in the territorials in his 20s. He probably wasn't even homeless in his car. Well, that's the one thing I got up on him. It's not much to boast about. But anyway, it turns out he was absolutely full of shite. Um, and then when he was approached by the Sunday Mirror, strangely enough, he declined to comment. I'm not surprised. You absolute bag of shite. Well, they're out there. If you know of a Walter Mitty that's going around saying that they are a Walter Mitty, let the club know. And that they can obviously contact this person and discourage them from carrying on in their Walter Mitty ways. Because it's like taking a big shit on a war veteran's grave, that is. It's tantamount to the same thing. The amount of disrespect. It's, it's a person who couldn't cut it then wearing it all, which almost like it, it's making it out to be so much less than what the actual real people actually did and achieved and all the rest of it. It's, I can't manage to do this. I was never a hero. And a lot of these people wouldn't say they were a hero anyway. It's, it's stolen valour. It's attention-seeking of the lowest form. It's getting people to come up and thank you for something you never did. Unbelievable. Let me know what you think in the comments, because if you're like me, or well, piss completely, um, and I've never served. Make no bones about that. It is a regret of mine in some ways, because it would have knocked the edges off me at a very young age. Um, the, the edges that had to be knocked off over the course of time, I'm afraid, but it probably made a man of me. But as it was, I went on without being in the service and had to <laughs> grow up slowly. Whatever. Anyway. There it is. Um, I'll get off now, and I think that's about it for the day. So, uh, more tomorrow.